I'm, s- I'm surprised they didn't include the term malinformation. Have you have you heard oh, that yeah, one? Yeah. Oh, true but inconvenient information. Malinformation. <laughs> that, malinformation. That, that's true referenced. but inconvenient. <laughs> that's literally the definition. <laughs> I know. And, and you yeah. can see in the internal communications in Twitter. Yep, uh, yep. Uh, they, the Twitter files, this is amazing, when they were talking about censoring true information that may cause vaccine hesitancy. Like they're outright saying, we have a political outcome we seek and must in- inhibit the spreading of information that is true because it goes against our agenda. That's what they are saying. Incredible. Here we are. Yeah, here we are sitting here. And, 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 it, and, it's, and it's frustrating because I know for a fact that if I make a video showing like some, you know, if we had a video of a morbidly obese, purple haired Twitter employee saying, say, breaking it down, you'd get a million views. You get a lawyer in a room who explains this is a crisis we're facing, and you get a hundred thousand views. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's that, that, you got to dye your hair, dude. I, 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 yeah, I, I guess I, uh, I, I guess I need to, you know, I have that clean cut uh, appearance, I suppose. But but Tim, to your point about uh, mis and disinformation, and I know that this is a sort of a, a cliche that's out there. It seems that. Um, mis and disinformation is, you know, it's just six months away from being uh, true information, right? And and, mm. and 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 we see that with the we see that with the vaccines in particular, right? So my client Alex Berenson was deplatformed, and his fifth strike was for saying, among other things, but the core of what he said was that the vaccines don't stop infection and they don't stop transmission. He said that on August twenty eighth, two thousand twenty one. When he said it, it was it was demonstrably true. It was. Being I think conceded, CDC had, 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 had they had, had conceded. It. They had conceded that it, that that it was true, and yet he was he he was deplatformed anyway. And now, of course, it's accepted as as gospel truth. Have you seen that meme where it's like, "I need new conspiracy theories because my old ones came true," <laughs> or "All my old ones yeah. came true." Yeah, that's why everyone keeps saying Alex Jones was right, and it's like, well, you know, Alex Jones was right on all the things that were based in reality. You know what I mean? Like. There's a lot of stuff he like he went on Joe Rogan a few years ago and he was talking about fifth dimensional aliens and like chimeras and stuff and it's like okay look look I get it Epstein censorship politics like Alex Jones has got a pretty good batting average but then he does a lot of stuff you know what I mean but but I digress I'm not to, I'm not here to, to to rag on or compliment Alex just to point out that it's it's become apparent that all of these quote unquote conspiracy theories end up being true and so you have these these active tech billionaires elites and government actors. Who are trying to suppress true and correct information, they're not going to win this one. It's, it's insane to think they can control information. It's like standing in a river holding your hands up trying to stop the water. That's what they're doing. But with laws like this, they are calling upon the forces of government to try and build dams on the flow of information, true and correct information. Can you speak to your time at the FDA a little bit? I wanted to make sure you get that in because <laughs> explain, explain what that experience was like. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I can go over it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I so like a lot of people, um, I was sitting on my couch in March of 2020, was working at a large law firm, had a successful commercial practice. Uh, 15 days to start the spread happened. My wife and I had three kids at the time. She was pregnant with our fourth child. And the opportunity presented itself to leave what I was doing and go and serve in the Trump administration. And my wife and I thought about it. We prayed about it, believed that God was calling us to make the sacrifice. I I went into the administration. I worked as a deputy general counsel at HHS and uh, worked for the general counsel there. And um, we we did a lot of really amazing things in the time that uh, I was there, the relatively short time that I was there to go back to the issue of our democracy, one of the things that we did was create a rulemaking that would require all of HHS's various components, including the FDA, to retrospectively review the rules and the regulations that they are foisting upon the American people for various reasons. And if they didn't retrospectively review those and publish an analysis showing that the cost and benefits lined up, and show their work to the American people, the regulation would expire automatically. So, so it was called the sunset rule. Yeah, I love those. It was yeah. called the sunset rule. And um, the Biden administration after uh, the new, new oh, here we coming go. <laughs> administration came in, 
they 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 promptly undid it. And by the way, uh, and by the way, and by the way, th this is a concept, and in, in it's outlined in the rulemaking. It was a concept of retrospective review that has been endorsed by basically every president since Ronald Reagan to include Barack Obama. So it's it's not like it's a radical uh, notion, and a lot of states do similar things with respect to sunset rules. But yes, I, I, I worked on, on, on those kinds of things, on uh, drug pricing initiatives. And um, at the end of the administration, I was the outgoing chief counsel of the, of the FDA, of the Food and Drug Administration. And I continue to represent clients and businesses and entrepreneurs who are trying to commercialize medical technology, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and, and so on. In terms Probably, of the like, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm just thinking about Maybe a Friday afternoon wasn't the best day to announce that we're suing the state. You know what I mean? But, but <laughs> I'll make sure to bring it back up on Monday because Friday is where news goes to die. Yeah. You know? the, what's the process for getting – is it once a, a sunset law has been initiated but then overturned, is it easier to get it reinstated later because it existed at once in the past? Well, there's certainly things for the agency to draw on to be able to promulgate a new rule. So just to give the audience a quick synopsis. So when, when you, you hear about these regulations that come out, you mentioned the ATF rule, um, there's a requirement that the agencies give notice to the community through the federal register. So they publish a proposal of this is the regulation that we intend to implement. They explain how it works. They explain the economic and legal and scientific rationale for it. There's an opportunity to comment on it. And then the agency typically has to take in that feedback, incorporate it, and then finalize the rule. And that's what we did in the context of the sunset rule, which was um, opposed, interestingly enough, by, um, I, I believe, in, even by some members of industry. Um, who didn't want the uncertainty that the the, the rule would would uh, would require? But to answer you know to answer your question, if 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 a regulation was sunset, that means that the agency would have to go back to the drawing board because what we 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 saw and what is is I I don't think it's it's a radical statement to make is when agencies promulgate rules that bind the American people and there are a lot of them that date back to before the internet for example. I mean, the economy's changed a lot in the last 25 years. And so when you've done economic projections that say that the benefits are X and the costs are Y, and you then look at that through the lens of the current state of 2023, you, you know, it's not X and Y, it's it's uh, A and B, and, and A and B are a lot more than X and Y. And so that's why the retrospective review process is so necessary. But again, I mean, the... The, the agencies would have to go back to the drawing board uh, if 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 the rules were sunset. And again, this is driving toward what Congress already requires under something called the Regulatory Flexibility Act, which Carter signed into law in 1980, which is that these agencies have to do this work. And they 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 aren't doing the work for the most part. Or in very rare cases, are they doing the work? And the American people are entitled to have them do the work and see the work and analyze the work. Isn't it crazy that the lockdown was three years ago? <laughs> I'm just totally derailing. I don't yeah, know. I was yeah, thinking yeah. about like you, you're mentioning it's three years when this, you know, and I'm just like, wow, three years ago. It was. And, and, you know, um, like my time jump, my, you know, my, re insane. my regret is that uh, I wasn't representing clients in litigation from the day they started. Uh, our, my, a partner of mine at Envisage actually, uh, Tony Biller, he and I at our prior law firm represented at the very outset, this was very early. This was in early April of 2021. We represented people who wanted to go out into downtown Raleigh and protest the lockdowns. And remember, there was a tweet by the Raleigh Police Department that said, protesting is not an essential activity. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we, we, we represented those, uh, those protesters. We stood up for free speech. We stood up for uh, the right to protest. And um, ultimately, the governor of North Carolina uh, caved and allowed the protest to go forward without having allowed uh, 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 and uh, well right but surrendered but, but, but his impedance to to, to 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 so that those people could go out on the streets and and in you know, a protest without being threatened with arrest but again my regret in some in some ways looking back is that I wasn't more aggressive on 
on what happened. And again, let's talk well, about our democracy. Hindsight's twenty twenty, man. Well, it yeah. is. But our democracy, let's talk about our democracy for a second. Think about how many of those COVID lockdown measures were never voted on. In my, in my home state of North Carolina, Governor Cooper issued these edicts deciding which businesses could stay open and which businesses had to shutter, which uh, organizations had could, could gather and which couldn't, which were which which were essential, well, which were, right? So, yeah, yeah, but to be fair, I mean, we know that free speech and Second Amendment protests were spreading COVID and Black Lives Matter protests were actually stopping the spread of COVID mm -hmm. because the virus was actually <laughs> exactly. recoiling in fear, the thought of racial, racial equity. So, you know, I, I understand why these governors allowed one and not the other. Makes perfect sense. Well, well but remember the public health community came out and uh, did the about face that it did and if you remember, I'm sure you do. There's videos of the, nurses clapping and cheering for the protesters who are marching. Right, right. But then also of them holding up signs blocking right-wing protesters who are talking about free speech. Right. They're like, these people are, it's a zombie cult. Right. And, and, um, and unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of people were harmed by it. And, and my heart goes out to uh, a lot of the, the, you know, the ordinary working class people who uh, couldn't, work from home yeah. and uh, were dependent on, for example, the restaurant industry to put food on the oh, yeah. table for their families. And All that food spoiled. I mean, the double this standard, the, the double standard for hate misinformation, like, you know, a certain ideology is allowed to physically protest during COVID, but another ideology is not allowed to. Same online. It's like certain ideology is allowed to be hateful and spread misinformation on social networks. Another ideology is not. I mean, right. misinformation is permitted on social networks, which, and we all know the issues. We all know- It calls the, for violence. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, to your point, Bill, can you think of an, uh, or, and Tim, I'll ask you this too. Can you think of a single time content has been flagged on Twitter or any of the other social media platforms because somebody said something more too uh, flattering about the vaccines that they were that they were, I mean, you've seen them referred to, and I don't think this is, I think this is hyperbole, right? But you see the vaccines referred to as a miracle. You see people say well, no, that no, no, if listen, you listen, take listen, it, right, you won't right. get no, it, I'll right? You, it, they, those aren't flat. Right, right, I'll tell you the story. Um, the, 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 the policy, the rule for YouTube, for instance, is you can't discourage people from going to the doctor or encourage treatments like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. Right. You, can't, you can't definitively say that they, they're effective. Not that I think they do. I, I honestly, I, I don't understand why people are so adamant on believing that they do. I think it's tribal. The same way people think it isn't. I'm like, I don't know, man. But here's, here's the funny thing. Casey Neistat, I like the guy. But he tweets out that he's like, go get vaccinated. And I'm like, isn't giving medical advice a violation of the rules? I respond, no, comma, talk to your doctor uh, uh, if it no. makes sense for you. And he responds with, that's weird. I didn't talk to my doctor. I went to a, a drive up and got the vaccine in, you know, in my car. And my attitude was like, you drove into a parking lot and let a strange man inject your arm with an unknown substance. Are you fucking insane? Go to a doctor, man. And then the, the people respond to me. They're like, Tim, you're such an idiot. The doctor is just going to take it the vaccine anyway. And I was like, then why are you mad? 